Yes, I know, I know, I know, I know. The judge says I was guilty. But when you think about it, what does a judge really know about guilt? Somebody who spends all day long in a high chair banging away with a gavel like a giant baby is not prepared to understand the mysteries of modern day life. All the same, they hit me with willful insinuation of the national flag, and for that I was given three months in the slam. Now, as far as I'm concerned, this is a gross miscarriage of justice. It's the kind of miscarriage of justice that should have people out in the streets demonstrating, smashing things up, and demanding my immediate release. That is not the case, and there's a good reason why it's not the case, and that reason is my lawyer. I didn't think there was much of a case in the first place, so I decided not to splash out. So I got the cheapest lawyer I could find, and when I met him at 10 o'clock in the morning, he did smell like an ancient distillery. And when he stood up from his desk, he was incredibly unstable. This meant in the court, even though I begged him seven times to ask these questions, he refused to challenge the prosecution and ask the question, did I know I was burning a flag? <coughs> had he asked that question, the answer would be, of course not. Because had I known it was a flag, I would have never burned the flag in the first place. What I had done was burn something on the ground that, that did look like a flag, but was not necessarily a flag. For example, the other week I saw a dog, a small dog, that looked exactly like a horse, but really small. I knew it wasn't a horse, I knew it was a dog, even though it looked exactly like a horse. So it goes with the flag on the ground. Now I'd like to take this opportunity to tell my side of the story. It was a cold winter's night, I was on the way home, and I'd lost my coat. I was shivering and shaking. Now, as I passed City Hall, I came to a halt. 150 meters ahead, a group of policemen and a group of people were arguing. The police fired tear gas canisters and the people threw Molotov cocktails and rocks. It wasn't the kind of place you could just walk through, so I stopped for a moment and wondered, how am I going to get home? As I stood and thought about an alternative route, it was so cold, I probably said out loud, man, it's freezing. No sooner had those words come out of my mouth, a man appeared out of nowhere wearing a mask and said, I have a solution for your cold. <laughs> you do? I asked. I do, he said, and he gave me a jerry can filled with petrol and a box of matches. Getting warm is really simple, he said. All you need to do is pour the petrol on that thing on the ground, light a match, and you'll be as warm as in your mother's kitchen. <gasps> I did as instructed. I doused the thing on the ground with the petrol, lit the match, and threw it. Whoosh! A huge flame, and it was incredibly warm. It was wonderful. And just as I was about to get truly cozy, the police came up and said, hey, what are you doing? I said, I'm just keeping warm. I had barely finished my sentence when I found myself being cuffed and dragged into a van and taken to a prison cell. Now, if there is a moral to this story, it is this. Next time you're in possible trouble and choose a lawyer, if he or she is unstable at 10 o'clock in the morning, if he or she smells like an old distillery, find somebody else and enjoy freedom. <laughs>